they going I feel like this movie gonna be like close to like this multiverse we've been doing because if you remember the first glimpse we see in the multiverse was from the first Doctor Strange, you know what I'm saying? So that was like the first we ever got a multiverse, you know what I'm saying, glimpse of anything. So I, I feel like this Doctor Strange movie going to go to the you, you, you actually hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I about to say, but I think this, one, this new one is about to go to a deep effect for real, bro. I think it's about to get crazier, bro. All right, now let's it's switch to the whole. Let's switch to a different move for you know we get too stuck on this one because I ain't gonna hold it. I am anticipating this next move on the next Spider Man movie to see who they introduce next. But you can't leave out the love, of, love and thunder. Like how you keep talking about Doctor Strange too. Morbius, Morbius, like all these movies, they uh, now they gonna play their old different role within this whole multiverse. But I'm still just trying to figure out what's going on with this love and thunder. Is Thor going to stay Thor or is he going to give the powers up to whoever? I have no idea, bro. I, I doubt to, it. I have no idea how they're going to do that movie, bro. Because uh, the movie I found him was Guardians of the Galaxy. Well, like going with them, and you know, you seen the whole little beat between him and uh Star Lord of who's really gonna be the captain. Yeah, bro. Yeah, because this movie's supposed to come out in like what, like July? July, I, I believe. Well, you talking about Doctor Strange or the other one? Uh, Thor four that comes out in July. That's like what two months before. That's two months after three, four months uh, Multiverse of Madness. Oh yeah. I, I, that's why I'm nervous about because I don't you don't know if they're gonna end up delaying it just based off what's been going on. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why I'm like, I, I, I'm hoping I, I'm, I'm just that's crazy. why I'm ready for it to see what's going on. Is he? You? Yeah. I'm the only person I can. There's only two to three people that come into mind when it comes to taking this power, which is, you know, the one who we left in charge, Valkyrie. Jane, but you know that that's just a big huge gamble. Or uh, the, the female who Jane always be with, like her little sidekick. You talking about Darcy? I'm yeah. about to say, we seen her in WandaVision. She basically going to be like a... Uh, I forgot yeah, so what I was like, well, I'm like, the, I forgot those what three... Doing, but, mm. It, it, it got to be out of them three, really. That's how yeah. I'm feeling. I ain't going to lie. I don't to think Thor, he's going to pass on the torch, though. I don't, yeah. think, I don't think he's going to pass on his powers to anybody. Yeah, I don't think that's really necessarily how I go. Um, or is it gonna be whoever hoards more than? I, I, I don't wanting. know. I don't really know too much about Thor to be one hundred with you. I wish I did. That's the whole point. Why I'm ready to see how this plays out. Like, even what, with what the is... third one, bro, I didn't even know how that third one's gonna turn out, bro. Like it kind of blew me away how they kind of did Ragnarok, bro. Like I didn't even expect how that was gonna turn out, bro. Cause I kind of almost yeah, lost hope after the second one. But bro. it was. <laughs> I'm not admit Ragnarok right is more of a comedy for real. <laughs> that, hey, all it's still in my top ten, though. Yeah, 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 right? for surely, man. It, it's a top ten, but it's it's a little bit more comedy into that shit for the simple fact that. But th you th needed that because it was gonna right. happen in Infinity War. You needed that. Yeah, right. I'm about to say because. It's that, that calm before the storm. Right. It was to a point, almost, that little serious acting, it was not working in Dark World. I'm trying to tell you, bro. It was to a point, nah. they, they kind of had Dark to have that comedic relief up in that. They kind of needed that. But I'm like, they, they made it work. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole point. It didn't matter if it's funny or not. Like, as long as you make it work where it's watchable, then it's good. That's good enough for me. But I mean, here's my, qu in terms here's my of funny, question to you, really, T. What? Now that she hopes gonna come out, you think they're gonna continue with any more banner stories? Yes, but see, I'm, I don't, uh, I feel like they're gonna bring. See, we seen different variations of Loki, Spider Man. We gonna see different variations of Hope eventually, because since we already got right. She Hulk coming, we gonna see, uh, we gonna see Thunder Ross. We gonna see Red Hulk. I'm hearing rumors. Uh, we, gotta, we ain't even get Red Hulk yet. We we gonna get him eventually, bro. Believe me, and they saying it's supposedly his. He gonna have a son, or he gonna have supposedly another hope. From the, what's his name? Scar or something like that. I don't really know too much about that character, but they saying supposedly that character is supposed to be coming to the MCU in some type of way. I don't know how, but it seems like we are gonna get different variants of these original visions, you know, or just just heroes that we know of. Let, so let me let me show you what what they got going on here. Let me show you. But I am not. I want to leave out the World War Hope. 
theory. Because I've always been thinking about that ever since. Because I'm like, that's the big one we haven't got yet at this point. That's what I'm saying. You, you, you see the screen here? Let me see. I'm watching. I'm watching to see how long. So that's what I'm saying. Look at this. So we already got all these. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Along with what? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 different things. All right, bro. You know how many characters and just stories they can introduce through that, bro? I'm still this, bitter. This is a lot of content. Right, it is, bro. I'm, I'm still it's bitter. A, it's a lot of content. Man. I'm still bittersweet to that Wakanda forever. I mean, I still want to see who they, you know, how it's going to play out and then what he's going to have to do with the multiverse, but. Right. I think yeah. that's how they're playing. I think they're doing it because of the multiverse, and I think they're going to pull a different uh, version of Black Panther, which I'm yeah. hoping is actually going to be Killmonger. Yeah, I was say I have no idea how they're going to do this movie, bro. It's, it's, I'm hearing too many different stories. It's controversy, and women, it's like they don't know which direction they want to go with, bro. It's like I don't know what they're trying to do. Yeah, it seems something. all over the place. Yeah, it really do, and it's like, bro. That that makes me feel bad. It seemed like once this man passed away, bro, it just things went so left. Cause I I felt like this man was still alive, bro. They would have knew exactly what vision they would have had for this character if he was still they, here. They would have been, been kicked out of Black Panther too. Right, it would have been out by now. That's what I'm saying. Like that's why I'm like it's hard to people trying to already compare it to the first one. I'm like, bro, that first one was just hard to compare, bro. We just gotta hope they yeah. find a way to make this movie work somehow, bro. Like but I don't not know, bro. I really don't. And it's like, even if they do no bring a new Black Panther, how can all the fans take that? But it's like, we know everybody's still not over Chad. It's like, even if that's the case, like, they, and really, I can tell when Marvel, when they know fans listening, bro, they'll do anything just to switch everything up or at least make, try to make things right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't really, like I said, I really don't know how that Black Panther will turn out. But I, it's hope, though. Because <laughs> they are, they, I'm, I, this is just what I'm hearing, you know. They saying they're going to start the story of T'Challa staying dead. That's what they said they was going to start the story at. Now I don't know. They didn't say nothing about who's going to play him, like play the new Black Panther or anything about the new character. They just said that's exactly where they're going to start the story from. Mm -hmm. Which I still feel cheated and robbed out of because I still wanted to see the T'Challa and Storm story on how they even first met. That would have been so lovely. Right. I feel like we was gonna get that, bro. This man was still here, bro. Like we already know the S man is gonna come. You know what I'm saying? We already knew Storm was gonna come eventually. So I'm like, that's that is crazy, bro. How that just turns out, bro. You know what we gotta do? I feel like we gotta do a separate video on the future of the MCU, and we gotta make sure that cousin uh, Frank is here though. Oh. He'll know. He'll know a good portion of this stuff too. Yeah. He'll know a good portion of this. All this stuff for real. Hell yeah, that's all I was about to say. I was about to say, because it's, it's weird he's not on here, because I would say, let's let's bring up this old bubble fair, but I'm like, we, we should just wait till he's on here, because I know Frank he wouldn't. Yeah, we don't need, we don't need Cousin Frank, Frank on the Star Wars. For sure. about his person. Right. So, I, I, get, I got time tomorrow. Hey, if everybody's off on Monday, we could probably do it Monday. Oh, yeah, I was about to say, I work on Monday, Monday, but I work graveyard, so I mean, I'll be free, you know what I'm saying, through the, you know what I'm saying, afternoon and a little bit in the evening. So I'll definitely have another little time. You know what I'm saying? I can chop it up with y'all. I, I, got, I got time any time between Saturday and Monday. I got any time. Just let me know. So Still, not a, I'm, I'm going to get back to this what if scenario. Who did they going to start with? We know they going to start off with uh, Gamora. Gamora? Yeah, because they, cause they were supposed to show, yeah, they, like, we were at the end of What If, with that, how they got uh, Gamora. They were supposed yeah, to have that in they, season one, but they delayed the season two. Killed Thanos, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right about that. I'm trying to think. It was something I wanted to, because, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, about on that, on the, on the Spider-Man movie, because, like, because you peep. It was one thing I forgot. I forgot because Solomon did end up popping off of here. Because there was one crazy part in that movie that always stuck with me, how, like, how it's usually every time when Spider-Man takes that loss, it's always like that that guardian figure that's always letting him know like like the great power comes great responsibility and all like that. And it's like yeah. there was a lot of like like I kinda peeped it when I was playing the Spider-Man PS4 game when Aunt May died. It seemed like for some reason a lot of these Spider-Man stories is like referencing like it could be just like Aunt May being like the version of how we see Uncle Ben, you know what I'm saying? Like just to be right. that, 
mentor, you know what I'm saying? It's the guardian. So it's like, I kind of, in a way, I knew Spry was going to take a loss. I said it was either going to be either MJ or it was going to be Aunt May. So, like, the fact that it Aunt May and the fact that it was Green Goblin, I did it. Because if you peep, it was always Green Goblin. I always was the reason how Went that. To her for right. Things, he was so. always the reason. So I love how they how they use Green Goblin for that. Like, still, like, even from a different universe, a different time, it's always, for some reason, it's always uh, Norman Osborne every time to make something bad happen, bro. Right? So I'm, I like how right. they kept that in line, like how they kept that connected. That was pretty dope. That's how when that Spider Man came, like how they was letting them know, like what they was going through. Like he immediately connected to them because he knew, even he even read off their senses, like he knew something was up. He knew something had to be like you meant to be this. You know what I'm saying? Like you didn't like she didn't, didn't die for nothing. You know what I'm saying? So that was a perfect way how they did that, bro. Like that was just like on the money how they did that. It's an absolute point. Like with the uh, like with um. Uh, Oh, what's it called? Uh, what was her name in uh, Doctor Strange? Mm, which one? The, uh, the, 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 the ancient, ancient one, one, the Sorcerer Supreme. The ancient one, yeah, the ancient one. Yeah. If you if you remember from the What If, Doctor Strange's girl dying was an absolute point. Yeah. So I think it's an absolute point for Aunt May or Uncle Ben to die for Spider Man. I think each character has an absolute point. We just don't know what it is. Right. So for this one, it was Aunt May Dunning. Right. I feel like you, you, you right about that, bro. Because if you look at Iron Man, bro, like if you look at his whole arc from the beginning all the way to the end, bro, it was like his whole thing was just not accepting the fact that he was going to die one day. You know what I'm saying? The fact that he had to take that sacrifice right. for the greater good. You know what I'm saying? Where he had to watch his loved ones die. You know what I'm saying? We had to go back in time just to make this happen. So he get that second chance to make this redemption work for him. You know what I'm saying? So like, like you said, it's always like a point in time. We just gotta accept that fate. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta just, you know what I'm saying? Just be ready for that that time to come. You know what I'm saying? Just that, like you said, just that point. It just they all had to take it. You know what I'm saying? But it just they overcome it, and that's what makes them heroes. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I right. like how that Marvel. I like how Marvel expressed that with every character. Because see, my every Marvel character has some type of like, you know what I'm saying? Point where they gotta deal with. It's based off grief. Or it could be something, you know what I mean? So, I like how it definitely And now that we are giving all these past and other torches on down, because we already got the new cab, we got the new Iron Man. I don't really, it's, it's, I'd say it's really still a debation between who's the smartest nigga up in New York in the Marvel Universe right now. Because you got Reed, you got Tony, you got... Peter, you, you got too many fucking geniuses. Yeah, I love how they showed how smart Peter was because, like, People know, bro. Peter Parker is one of the smartest like heroes oh, in the universe. Smart as shit. And it shows, and that shows that up even, in every single Spider-Man movie. Yeah. Right, but see, they they didn't really show in terms of this part. They didn't really necessarily show how he got outsmart somebody. You know what I'm saying? They just showed how his tech can usually just be his like his this, this emergency kit for him. You know what I mean? Like they really showed he can really like the fact that he outsmarted Doctor Strange with his own magic using geometry, bro. That that was a yeah. Spider-Man moment right there. You know what I'm saying? Like that was actual like Peter Parker's like Spider-Man moment right there. So I love how they kind of showed that, bro. That was pretty dope. Cause like it just shows like. He needed somebody just to carry. So I'm like, bro, this is Spider Man, bro. I'm like, he carried a whole franchise by himself before he even came to MCU. Like, they need to show like what makes him what he is. And I like, I love how this movie showed that, bro. We like they brought in all of them. That was that was pretty dope. I, I think for this Tom Holland Spider Man, I think each movie showed a little bit of each one. Cause in the first one, he he mainly talks about like it, he doesn't necessarily talk about it, but you see him um, like in class like actually making the web fluid. Right. So yeah. you know he's a, he's a chemist with that. And when it also came down to the Chitari piece that he had, he he knew that he can do certain things with that, and he was also able to. I mean, even though it, technically it was a Stark suit as well, right. he knew eventually he knew he could use it. Right. And then you look at Far From Home. And you see, like, you know, when he's inside of the, uh, what is it, like, like the illusion, yeah. that, that it, like, it, even with the plane, in, in the illusion, though, he was able to use his smarts to go, okay, let me attach this, attach this, web him up, like, send an electric current and everything. He was able to do that, but then, like you said, in No Way Home, he used geometry to get it all together so he could take out Strange for that one, for that one moment. It's like each way is showing how smart he is. So that's why that's why when he had the GED book, I was like, okay, he doesn't really need it, but he needs it because 
as far as class that he's taking. Right. Yeah, bro. They, they definitely showed, like, how, like, even, like, they just show even, for instance, in the first two movies, I knew something was off where they didn't really show how powerful, like, his spider sense can be. You know what I'm saying? Where it's, like, they didn't really put too much of, like, I mean, they kind of teased it in Infinity War, you know what I'm saying? Where they just, when he showed something was wrong, he got goosebumps and everything like that, but... They really showed how like powerful his spider sense can be, where he can even sense like a different like a personality. You know what I'm saying? Where he noticed like an alter ego. You know what I'm saying? Like that part when he peed with Green Goblin, bro. When he peed like when someone was off with Norman, bro. Like that's how powerful that that spider sense is, where he noticed like when something is off, like with in terms of the in terms of the emotion. You know what I'm saying? In terms of, like the alter ego. You can't leave bro. out Xfinity War either, bro. How you feel me? Everybody on a field trip and then. Spider sense, look yeah. outside. That's all I'm saying. I brought Shit. that up. Yeah, when he when he had goosebumps on like that when he, but that was only right. a tease of it. But we already had, we already had damn near two Spider moves at that point. But we didn't really get no nothing about like his Spider sense, which that was like the main thing that came to you know what I'm saying the forefront when it comes Spider Man. So it's a lot of things I felt they left out. But it's like in this third one, they gave you a closure of why they didn't go that route. If that makes sense. <laughs> Like, but it's not what I feel like they actually did, because, because like you said, because he was like he just felt it, and he was like Aunt May, because he knew it was gonna be something to deal with her. Yeah, uh-huh. that's that's what he felt like. They like granted they never called it the Spidey sense. That's why they always called it the Peter Tingle, Tingle right? Because yeah. <laughs> the, I actually know it's Spider Sense, but it's like okay, they they didn't really explain like how spiders have those senses, so that's why they never called it the Spider Sense in the movie, but. Like you said, but for him to know that about Green Goblin, that was big. But what the kicker to me was when Doctor Strange pushed him into his astro form, and as he's trying to take the box, <laughs> his hand is just yeah. doing this. That's the Spidey sense. Yeah, bro. And he was like, oh, wow, seems like my body is actually reacting on its own, as even though I'm not there. That's the Spidey sense right there, because it's in his DNA now. Right. So that's yeah. what that's what and that's that was like the big kicker for me with the Spidey sense. I was like, nah, he they they did well with that part. Yeah, bro. But still, to get back on topic, the passing of the torch is basically because we we already got the Kate Bishop, we got Tony Stark with Spider Man and uh, Falcon with America with Captain America, but <clears throat> is his little sister supposed to be taking over for Natasha? I mean, clearly that we we know Scarlett it, Johansson technically she her character is dead, and we know Scarlett Johansson ain't coming back. So is like, um, Bruce Cousin supposed to be taking over for him? You said who? Is Bruce Cousin supposed to be? Because ain't that basically who She Hulk is? His cousin? Yeah, it's supposed to be his cousin. I mean, so bro, I she's really supposed to be taking over for him. Well, I mean, we um, gotta see. We don't know yet. We gotta see till the show come out. Mm. I, we there's too many pat. There's too many torches. That's looking like it's been passed, but you know, most Marvel fans already know who basically the torch got passed to. But it's just that's just who the, what I'm looking at right now at this point because we ain't got no more war. I see what you mean. We ain't, we, ain't, we ain't got no everybody else. Although Ant Man is up in a whole league of his own, I can't see who can replace him to even begin with. Well, the torch was already well for Ant Man. The torch was already passed because it went from Hank Pym. I mean, it went from Hank Pym to, to him. him, right? Yeah. So I'm like, we are kind of seen that. We just gotta wait and see, bro. Like we really don't know. Like that's what we. That's the biggest thing. The great thing about Marvel is it, it has us wondering until you know what I'm saying actually happens, bro. I mean, like I mean, I want to see. I definitely want to see more variants for sure. Which I'm pretty sure we is, bro. We we just seen three of our Spider Man, bro. I'm pretty sure we're gonna see different versions of variants besides like that's bigger than dinner, biggest Spider Man. Like I I say the biggest ones I'll say is X Men or Fantastic Four. Like that's probably the biggest you could compare to the Spider Man, bro. It's like each reveal is getting even bigger, so it's like, bro, I feel like that's like the biggest route they can go is the X Men next, bro. Like, why not go there? You can bring in Deadpool, Hugh Jackman, bro. Like, you can bring in the people that yeah. they're trying to make things work. You know what I'm saying? They got. But then happen. again, when did the Fantastic Four come in? We got to find that out. That's the thing. We got to figure out how they're gonna be introducing it. We don't know yet. Uh, no, I'm talking about like comic wise. When did they come in? Comic wise, uh, comic wise, I don't really remember, but yeah. I do know in the comics, the Fantastic Four is actually the reason why the Avengers came about. They were like the initiators of the Avengers in the comics. 
that. Bro, so for this that, one, man. and you know what? That's actually a good point, though, because if you think about it, if in the comics, the Fantastic Four is who got the Avengers together, who basically created it, I can actually see it to where now Fury is in space probably investigating something, and he probably has the people from the Fantastic Four up there to help him, and that's how they get their powers. And Fury is probably talking with them to figure out what can we do to get the Avengers back on track since we'd have lost a good a good few people. No, they didn't lost. So it's, so it's giving them their own story, but it's also trying to stay true to the comics, which I don't, I always say this. I always I always say this to people. Don't look at the the MCU as needing to stay true to the comics. Look at it as a whole different universe. They just didn't create comics for it. Because because really? each because each character in the in the Marvel comics has it, like has like a different like has, has, like, has a different like, one stories to their comics exactly right for real that's why I said like that's why I said look at the MCU like don't try to compare it to the comics because you're no, just gonna no, be no, mad no. about it I stop doing that because uh, once I thought once I watched Endgame and looked at a couple of comic scenarios that really didn't make sense that's exactly when I been stopped doing that shit. I, I stopped doing that like when the first Avengers came out. To be honest, yeah, I think once it was, was yeah. I mean, but I noticed like one thing about Marvel they'll take they'll take things out of comics that just make their own. Like I say, they just make their own version of it. Like we seen Infinity Wars was we was already know what Infinity War was before the movie came out, but like we obviously <laughs> knew it was gonna be different. But I mean, that's what the MCU is. It's just the live action version. Even when the Spider Man, even the X Men we seen twenty years ago, it wasn't necessarily comic book accurate, but. We we got a live action. It was the best that they can do. Like I'm saying it don't need to be comic accurate. Not every movie needs to be that. For surely don't. Because something would be. It would be a lot of plot holes. It ain't. Most of them comics didn't have like no true like. It didn't have necessarily a true like story and dialogue to it. Is a live action film do. It's just like a couple. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just a couple lines, a couple words, and then next page. You know what I'm saying? So. And to be and to completely be honest with the you know the X Men of our time. Like let's be honest with this. Only the and not, not to just not just with the characters, but pretty much the story made sense and they kind of brung majority all the characters in there that basically were like I can't name one another X Men besides X Men Evolutions where they had told or Silver, you know. The McNeil or something. That's basically what I'm gonna call them. And like, think of all the X Men enemies that they didn't win about. Juggernaut, uh, Magneto, Saber Tooth, Mystique. Uh, like, it's hell of them. And that's the thing. You don't know which X Men they're gonna introduce, bro. There's so many X Men that we haven't been like introducing live action yet. Like, there's so many of them out there. They ain't gotta just introduce the original ones first. Like, they if they want to build like a real X Men, bro, they can just build a school and just have a school full of mutants go there. They can they can introduce characters right. we haven't even seen before. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's actually another thing I meant to touch up on that Spider Man. When the hell are we getting Black Cat? Black Cat? I don't. I don't know, but I did see. That's, that's a tough one. I did see a reference of Black Cat in that Morbius, uh, in that Morbius um trailer. She was in that newspaper. Her and Rhino. Exactly. But what's when crazy was they said that made Spider Man one. They said that Black Cat was supposed to be in that made Spider Man three. If that would have happened at that time, that was supposed to be who was supposed to be in the Felicia Hardy. So I'm like, I don't know if that was supposed to be some type of connection. There. I'm not sure. But she is being referenced. It's crazy you brought that up. But I don't know if they're going to win or how they're going to bring her in it. But she is referencing Morbius, though. I'm starting to see a little bit of what you're talking about, Deontay. Uh, how that spider, that amazing Spider-Man story can pretty much go with all this crazy shit they forgot to mention now. That's what I'm saying. Like, like I said, like, you know, with MCU, don't, don't take it from... Like, you know, from the comic point of view, because like I said, there's so many variations out there. They're just going to make a reference to it, and they keep it pushing. And I like it that way. Like, you know, it keeps you on your toes. But my question is, it since Venom, since Venom is basically about to be, you know, from the Spider-Man point of view, a little, you know, going to be revived, because right now he's down and, like, on his low right now. Where's the rest of the symbiotes, then? Cause we we got riot, but there was a blue one, there was an orange one, there was them other symbiote. I think they, I forgot. It's something they explain what happened to them other symbiotes, but 
Because some of them symbiotes didn't necessarily last that many. I forgot how they explained that. But I remember what you were talking about because there was a yellow one and a blue one. Like, in the, the uh, Venom one. movie? From the first one, they was basically, when he was explaining all the hosts that was in there, man, he was using them, them some of them patients that was up in the hospital, they was using them, some of them, like, symbiotes. They, they basically died. They basically died off, right. That's what I'm saying, yeah. So, it's really they, just they, three they, we, we know gotta, of. But you got to keep in mind, though, too, the ones that was in the first Venom movie, since we didn't really get the names of them, nah. we don't really have to worry too much about them. Because it's like there's a whole other planet a that actually right. has the symbiotes there. And the symbiotes that you've seen in the comics could very well come in later. And honestly, even then, I don't really feel like that those symbiotes are a big, dramatic piece of the story to Spider-Man. Nah. I'd be okay if they left them out. I wouldn't mind. Uh, no, no, no. I was touching back on the Venom story. Oh, yeah. yeah that, like, like I said, though, like, you don't, like, try not to get too much into it because it's so much content, they're not going to be able to really do it because there's so much more they could do rather than try to, like, fit all that up in That's what I was saying about, about No Way Home, to where I'm like, okay, if they were to fit anything else, they would have to split this into two different movies. So it wouldn't be two and a half hours. It had to be five hours. It had to be, like, two movies that either two and two and a half hours long. That's why they didn't let there be carnage. Yeah, that's why they didn't let there be carnage so short, because they're like, no, 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 we, we're just using this to set up Venom being in the MCU. So even though I was mad, because I'm like, yo, I was excited as hell, because I'm like, look, Arnage is going to be on the big screen now. I'm excited. I watched the movie, and I'm like, yo, this is disappointing. But I get where they're going. I didn't really like it, but I get where they're going. So I'm like, okay, we can get an even better Carnage in MCU, because that version of Carnage, like being staying true to the comics, will be filled with hatred because of Venom not being able to stick to Parker. Like, you know, like, it, there's, it's like a whole other story that you have to bring along with it. Right. Yeah. That, it's a lot to bring with the symbiote. That's why I'm like, but I could possibly see a Venom 3 happening where they'll try to bring at least, I think the only one that's still out there is Toxin, I think. And that's where the symbiote went on the, the cop on the second one. That's really the only symbiote we know that's probably still out there. But I don't really, really know if he's going to really be an interesting character. They probably just kill him off like they did with Carnage and shit. But then again, to touch up on that, because remember when all of them let their be Carnage, it was, you know, what was that nigga name? Who, who was basically the... Uh, Cletus how Cassidy? Carnage even got created. What's that nigga name? Cletus Cassidy? Yeah. His wife had mutant powers, right? So basically, how far along did they skip? That's basically what I'm trying to figure out. But you got to think of it this way, though, too. Let There Be Carnage is an MCU. That's all Sony. So they could have mutants over there if they wanted to. But even then, which mutant can they have? Because the mutants is a Fox thing, which is now Disney. So... Mm -hmm. So that's all I'm saying. Like, let there be carnage. Isn't isn't fully MCU. It's really just the post credit scene that is. Uh, but now, because of what happened in No Way Home, Venom is now going to be in the MCU. But but his previous, but the stories that we've been seeing will not be. Yeah. It'll be very different. Uh, uh, hey, hold on, wait, man. Man. Just... Hey, bro. Why? I wanted to say one thing. You remember that part? I was just thinking because I remember before I left the theater, I I was thinking about this. You remember the part on No Way Home when when he was about to stab when he was about to stab Groblin and Toby stopped him from stabbing him. Right. And then he came from the back and stabbed him in the back. <laughs> My heart almost <laughs> dropped at that part, bro. Because I was like, at first I was thinking, it's no way they about to kill Toby off like this, bro. It's no way, bro. But then I, nah, then they kind of, if they did. right? I was just like, he was just like, okay, I've been stabbed in the back before. I'm okay. I was just like, okay, I was about to say, bro, that would have been so horrible because I was thinking back when y'all were saying like that, um, like that Toby kind of represents that experience for me. And if you remember from that Spider Verse, how he died, or how he basically how he got killed off. So I was thinking like, there's no way they about to do it like this, bro. I was like, no, nah. I was like, thank you, he good. I was like, uh, uh. Right. I had a feeling eventually. We going to see, like, just, just the Peter Parker general, like, if it's they all, like, he dies eventually. So, I'm like, I know it's going to probably be a way they're going to close them all off where they all have to die eventually in some type of way. And then where that's where Miles have to basically come in. That's where he'll come and get the mantle most likely once after Peter passed away. Shit. Well, that's usually how the story goes. It could be a universe where they in the same universe together. Like, we kind of see that in the Spider-Man 2 game. So, they could they could do something like that. 
But I don't know. I'd rather him just tie take the mantle of them being the same Ooh. universe together because that would be a little bit too much right there. I don't know. Right. I don't know, though. It depends. But yeah, bro. I'm definitely, I love where this movie was going because it's like we, we definitely got the Spider Man that we, like, in terms of this Spider Man, it's like the one we asked for. We ain't, he ain't got to rely on Iron Man no more. He ain't necessarily got that Guardian figure. He really to himself. Like, they really represent that No Way Home. Like, he really had nowhere to go. He really had to go to, like, a scrap home. He really just found him, like, a little scrap home in New York. Now, he about to start from scratch. Now, he got to make his own suits. You know what I'm saying? What you see him what he do. did. He made right. his own suit. And it, and it looked dope, right? Yeah, it looks, it, looks like the, it looks like the original suit. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. That's all I was like, bro. It's crazy how they actually going. It kind of reminds me. Of like how you play Spider-Man PS4, like when he's in that apartment, he creating his own. You know what I'm saying? He making his own suit. Yeah. Like it's like he turned into that experience version of Spider-Man. That's it's good how we get to see like we get to see finally him from high school and college, and then we go to see him as an adult. Like we get to see that full arc of Peter Parker Spider-Man now. You know what I'm saying? That's how I said like he is gonna be the best Spider-Man like going forward because we are gonna finally get to see his full like life. You know what I'm saying? From the beginning all the way to the end with this Tom Holland one. So. Yeah, bro. I'm definitely excited to where this going to go. I don't know who going to be the villains because there's so many villains. It's like, bro, who can necessarily be his arch enemy at this point, bro? There's so many, but I got faith in MCU, bro. After what I just seen, bro, I definitely like, I'm definitely... I don't lie. I, I think what's going to happen going forward for Spider-Man, I think his main arch villain might be Kingpin. They're going to take it back to, like, Spider-Man animated series to where his arch nemesis was Kingpin. Hmm. And he's going to be helping Daredevil. That's I can what see I was that thinking, happening. Cause I was like, but if that's the case, who would be? So it would be like kind of just like it'll just be a team up against Kingpin. Cause it seemed like at a street level heel heroes, he seemed like the main villain out of street level heroes at this point. Like he stands out the most out of all these street level villains we've been seeing. You know what I'm saying? So, and plus we know like you know um, in terms of Spider-Man and Daredevil, like that's basically his arch enemies right there. So that's why I was kind of wondering, cause it seemed like Kingpin is being set up to be. The next big one. But like I said, in terms of the street level films, we still got the Eternals and all them out there. So we don't know anything that's outer space, any bigger threat that's out there we gotta deal with. You know what I'm saying? So right. we know we, we know we got Kane. So it's Kane, Kingpin. I know there gotta be one more that's out there that's like a big villain that's out there. I don't know who to be. And but this is another quick we, we gotta be dealing with Galactus at some point though. That's the in thing. The 80s Spider-Man movies? What? Did we even get Scorpion up in any of these Spider Man movies? We did in the first one, but uh, we don't even know. It, it wasn't Scorpion. He just had a tattoo on his neck at the most. But technically, he was Scorpion because he has he got the name. Um, he got the the actual name of the Scorpion. So it is him. But we haven't seen him in the suit or nothing like that yet. But it is Scorpion though, for sure. Yeah, I say that should be the next villain they should try to bring in. Cause I me, mean, I'm only saying this because. We already seen that fight between Rhino and Spider Man with all the Amazing Spider Man, so I believe they should just, you know, if they come up with another Amazing, they gonna probably you know, if it come down to it, they'll redo that because that was probably one of the worst ones they probably ever did, bro. That was so bad, bro. Like, it's the reason why they scrapped that Amazing Spider Man too, bro. Like, Electro was kind of just it was whatever with Electro, but when they showed Rhino, bro, it was like, are you serious, bro? Like, that was like that was not gonna work, bro. Well, truth be told, Kevin Feige is actually the one who stopped the Amazing Spider-Man series. He stopped it from happening. He he actually Kevin Feige is actually the reason why they stopped the Amazing Spider-Man uh, continuing on. Why? Because of the Marvel <laughs> Studios and like that. He was basically about to have the rights and like that. It wasn't that because I mean he stopped it like way before. Like no, we really even got this far. But overall, it was it was because of directors like you know not wanting to. Like, barely wanted to do Amazing 3, and then he didn't want to do 4, so there was that. They tried to blame it on Toby, which we knew that was stupid. But Kevin Feige was the one that was like, okay, the direction of this ain't really going the way we thought it would. We're going to basically stop this, and I'm going to do something over here, and we're going to get this shit right. That's basically what he was doing. Yeah. Gladly he did that, because you see... Where we at now, bro, it's like, it's to a point where he found a way to bring all our Spider-Man together. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like That's why every, I said. every fan, is, good job every fan is happy now. You know what I'm saying? From the Sam Raimi to the Amazing all the way to now. You know what I'm saying? It's like every fan is satisfied now. You know what I'm saying? That's why I said faith in Kevin Feige. <laughs> Definitely, bro. I'm sure got faith in Faith in Kevin Feige. Man. 
I'm out on the uh, tag because I already got your gamer tag. I'm trying to get uh, see what do he got 2K22 or 21. Nah, I still got 21. I don't even like I'd be on my PS5, but I don't really be doing too much though. I just be chilling for the most part. I don't be doing too much competitive uh, stuff no more. Uh, you know, we still ain't played our game, so you feel me? When I get back home, I want, I want my one. You feel me? Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm looking to, I'm gonna look into the next Madden or the next 2K, and I'm gonna see what I can do with that. Nice. For sure, bro. Well, I about to say it's good to have y'all on here again. I love y'all, bro. And then we're going to definitely try to get a video know, soon. Is, you said on Monday we could probably try to get another one, you know what I'm saying? If You know what I'm saying? If you or Frank available, we could try to get one in, chop it up by Star Wars or something like that for a minute. That's what I'm saying. Let me know. Yeah, like, I, I, got, I got time. Tomorrow, it's cause good. Because I, I know he probably, uh, what's, yeah, he probably going to be chilling tomorrow. Yeah, most likely tomorrow will be best. Boss. All right, there, All right, for sure, for sure, man. For sure, for sure. I'm going to tap in with uh, you soon, man, for sure. All righty. All right, peace, y'all. Peace. peace.